Hello everyone and uh, I'm Larry. Uh, welcome back to Larry's Americana and uh, yeah today we're up to number eight. Number eight. Um, this is the uh, original magazine cover that today's story was featured in and today as you can see here we're going to be talking about the frisbee. Yeah, um, this is going to be a lot of fun because, uh, as you know, the Frisbee uh, has been around for a long time. And uh, the Frisbee is, you know, actually something that uh, people all over the world love, people of any age love, and something that you can play anytime, any place. So... Um, yeah, let's enjoy talking about the Frisbee today, okay? Let me tell you a little bit about it. <clears throat> so, watching somebody who knows how to handle a Frisbee is like watching poetry in motion, right? Yeah, it's that beautiful, huh? It is smooth, fluid, and ballet-like, yet strongly macho. And being able to play it well yourself is even more of a joy. Conversely, watching somebody struggle with a Frisbee is painful to see. Awkward, choppy, and disconcerting. A truly embarrassing experience for the person playing and the, person, the people watching. Americans are, without a doubt, the best frisbeeers in the world. This should not be a surprise since the modern day plastic frisbee or flying disc originated in the state of California, that figures, huh? In 1948, uh, a place with uh, beautiful, good weather led to one of the greatest outdoor inventions ever. Huh? The Frisbee floating through the air conveys a feeling of freedom and creativity, much like our image of the typical American. The history of the Frisbee is actually quite interesting. The name and the concept apparently got its birth with the Frisbee Baking Company of Bridgeport, Bridgeport, Connecticut, a well-known supplier of pies to college campuses starting in the 1870s. Students came to cherish the pies not only for the delicious taste, but also for the empty pie tins that could be tossed back and forth after eating the pie within. I remember playing with pie tins in my house with my brothers when we were kids in much the same manner. So this is what we're talking about here. Yeah, um, this company from Bridgeport made pies. Here's the pie tins that um, they were talking about so these pie tins originally contain the pies and then after that when it was empty people used to throw these around and that was the idea the where where the name frisbee came from hmm. the next watershed in the history of the frisbee was in 1948 and that's a, a pretty important date in the life of the Frisbee, um, when a man named Walter F. Morrison and his partner invented a plastic version of the flying disc. This new disc could fly much further and be thrown with much more accuracy than pie tins. Morrison eventually received a patent for the design of the toy and later in 1957 sold the rights to a startup toy company called Whammo. I 
think you can probably see this tiny logo over here. That's Wamo, who also marketed the famous hula hoop and Super Bowl. More, more about the hula hoop a little later. Before eventually selling out to the Mattel toy company, Wamo sold more than a hundred million Frisbees. Total sales today number well over 200 million. Although Mattel is not the only company that sells flying discs, almost 60 other companies do too, the Frisbee brand name has become the generic term most people use for the toy, much like the moniker Xerox was originally used for photocopy machines. Um, <clears throat> Although I am sure that many of you at one time or another have had a chance to throw a Frisbee around with friends, Frisbeeing, the way people actually enjoy playing with a Frisbee, is quite varied. Uh, here's an example, Frisbee horseshoes or Frisbee golf. And here's a, a book called The Complete Book of Frisbee, which introduces lots and lots of the different games that you can play, uh, actually more than I'm going to talk about today. And uh, I'll try to uh, leave some links to other Frisbee stuff and some Frisbee videos. So. Here is a short list of some of the Frisbee games that are out there. Frisbee golf, ultimate Frisbee, dog Frisbee, very exciting, right? Freestyle Frisbee and distance Frisbee. Let's take a look at each of these in a little more detail. And if you're interested, please do a search on YouTube to view some, some exciting video clips as I said, I'll leave some links, but you can search on your own video links of all of these games. <clears throat> okay. Frisbee golf. This follows the same rules as regular golf and is played on equally large courses. But instead of a small cup on the green at the end of a hole, there is a basket of sorts. It's a fun game and really good players can throw for both distance and accuracy. Some American golf courses even open up their courses for Frisbee golf. Ultimate Frisbee. Two high school students created this competitive team game in the late, in the late 1960s. It's a cross between football and soccer and involves a great amount of spectacular running, leaping, diving, catching, and throwing. Yeah. Dog Frisbee. Thousands of dog owners have trained their pets to chase thrown Frisbees and then leap high up into the air to catch them in their teeth. It is really something to see. Freestyle Frisbee. This is also called trick frisbee, much like the Harlem Globetrotters of basketball fame flip, spin, and control the ball in amazing, flashy ways. Frizz, freestylers do the same with their frisbees. Up the arm, around the neck, between the legs, and so on. Distance frisbee. This game is pure power. Whoever can throw the disc the furthest wins. The current world record, world distance record, held by American Scott Stokely stands at how many meters do you think? Yeah, 210 meters. It's about, I don't know, I guess two football fields maybe, something like that. <clears throat> The Frisbee is a toy well worth your time getting to know. If you learn how to throw it and catch it fairly well, you will have the ability to, to make friends 
all over the world. Um, if you see people playing Frisbee, jump up, jump in and join them and you will make instant friends no matter where you are or what you're doing. It's true. It really is. <clears throat> in fact, a friend of mine here in Japan talks about a similar experience that he had during his sophomore year in college. One day he was playing Frisbee with some buddies on campus in the US. One of them made a toss that went too far over his head and it hit a young Japanese girl who had come close to watch them. He ran over to see if she was okay. She was. He took a break from the game to talk with her and she eventually became his wife. Yeah, she did. How many toys can do that? That's an amazing story. Maybe it's happened to you too. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's end with a quick quiz here. So 1948, this is when the Frisbee was um, first developed. So in 1948, what else was going on in the world? You can see here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, five pictures of other things that were going on in 1948. Only one of them did not happen in 1948. You tell me what you think. First one, um, Harry S. Truman won a huge election in the United States. Two, Mahatma Gandhi from India was assassinated. Three, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello were the most popular comedy team in the, in the U.S. And um, in 1948, their movie, Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein, was released. Four, the hula hoop was invented. Five, the great Yankee, New York Yankee, Babe Ruth, passed away. So... What do you think it is? Any ideas? Okay, I'll tell you, it was the hula hoop. Actually, the hula hoop came into existence five, uh, sorry, 10 years later in 1958, actually the year I was born. So there you go. Thanks a lot, everyone, for joining me today. Um, please leave comments and um, Share your thoughts and experiences on this week's topic, the Frisbee. Thanks very much and um, see everyone again. Thank you.